Good morning. In this time of uncertainty, it was not a foregone conclusion that this day would happen. <clears throat> but nonetheless, here we are. We did not know what manner this would unfold. But uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are doing this internally and without the fanfare of having attendance of the media directly or those who have supported us in the community being with us. So on the behalf of the Toronto Crime Stoppers, the Toronto Police Service, the Unit Commander of, of Partnership and Engagement Unit, Superintendent Stacy Clark, our Deputy Chief, Peter Ewan, I extend a hearty welcome to all that are in attendance via any social media platform. Personal attendance, as I mentioned, has been limited due to COVID-19 restrictions. I bring thanks to our community partners as well as our most cherished stakeholders, the community at large. We thank Crime Stoppers Board of Directors, the media without, the, without whom this would not be possible. The Toronto Police Service, one of the main components of the Toronto Crime Stoppers program. And in that vein, I would like to bring to the podium, or he's already sitting here, the Toronto Police Chiefs, the Toronto Police Services Chief of Police, Chief James Raymer. Thank you to everyone for coming today to celebrate another successful year for our Toronto Crime Stoppers. Toronto Crime Stoppers is a partnership between the police, the community, and the media, which enables concerned members of the public to anonymously provide information on the identity of a criminal or incidents of criminal activity. Crime Stoppers is a not-for-profit community-based organization operated by volunteers and I want to personally thank them for their continued dedication in helping us find those responsible for often violent and dangerous crimes. In 2020 alone, Toronto Crime Stoppers received more than 7,100 tips, resulting in 67 individuals arrested, 250 charges laid, 145,000 in property seized, and over $2.1 million in legal drugs taken off our streets. Illegal drugs. Tips from the community can play a critical role in solving homicides, armed robberies, and human trafficking investigations, as well as removing illegal firearms from our streets. Crime Stoppers doesn't just collect tips. They are heavily engaged in the community, creating awareness. They are in our schools, educating and speaking directly to Toronto's young people, and host an educational school symposium that over 700 students attend from across the city. Partnership with the Bolo campaign last year in particular led to the apprehension of Tequan Robertson, who you will recall was wanted for the shooting of two young girls in a playground, as well as the arrest of Alexander Fountain, who was sought for a fatal shooting in 2017. And the Toronto Crime Stoppers work does not stop there. They have also created their podcast, Crime Stoppers, See It, Say It, Stop It to continue to stay connected with communities. It is not surprising to hear they also received several provincial awards and a global award from Crime Stoppers International. As we begin the new year, the theme for Crime Stoppers in 2021 remains focused around the community reward program and their new slogan, see it, say it, stop it. Doing the right thing is its own reward. On behalf of the service, I want to thank Crime Stoppers for their partnership, which has helped solve cases and continues to support our efforts in protecting the public and keeping our community safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Raymer. Before I introduce the next speaker, I would be remiss if I did not recognize two individuals whom have been stalwart within the Toronto Police Service as members of the Crime Stoppers family. Daniela Lipa has worked diligently behind the scenes with her hard work going mostly unrecognized. The brilliance of Police Constable Martin Douglas has been on display for many years, even in circumstances wherein the benefactors has had no clue who the genius behind the product is or was. Now for our next speaker. Since joining the Crime Stoppers family, I've gotten to know this person very profoundly. His timeless, his tireless commitment and is infectious and admirable. Please welcome the chair of the Toronto Crime Stoppers program, my brother, Sean Sporton. 
Thank you, Detective Ferguson, and uh, thank you, Chief Raymer, for attending today. We appreciate your continued support. I would like to start by extending our sincere appreciation to the members of the Toronto Police Service, all of our first responders, healthcare professionals, and essential frontline workers for your commitment, dedication, and resilience during the pandemic. On behalf of the Toronto Crime Stoppers Board of Directors, welcome to the 2021 Crime Stoppers Month launch, which is celebrated annually during the month of January around the world. Crime Stoppers is a unique partnership between the police, media, and community that provides concerned citizens an avenue to anonymously provide information on the identity of a criminal or incident of criminal activity. 2020 has been a complex and challenging time. Like most, we were forced to adapt to the environment and make a shift in how we operated to maintain community engagement. Our commitment to community safety with a focus on crime prevention, as always, remain the priority to the foundation of what we do at Crime Stoppers. And our collective hard work continues to have an impact on helping combat criminal activity in the City of Toronto. As we look back on 2020, a number of highlights need to be mentioned. In March, as the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions were implemented and our grassroots face-to-face -face engagement was constrained, we needed an avenue to stay connected to the community with authentic, meaningful and informed discussion. As such, as the Chief said, we launched our podcast called Crime Stoppers, See It, Say It, Stop It. After 16 episodes, our podcast has been a great success, being heard in 23 countries around the world and can be found on all podcast platforms. Our ongoing partnership with the BOLO program continue, continues to be successful in assisting investigators, as seen this past July with the arrest of Tequan Robertson and Alexander Fountain suspects on Canada's most wanted list for murder and attempted murder. In October, at both the Ontario Association of Crime Stoppers and International Crime Stoppers virtual award ceremonies, Toronto Crime Stoppers received several awards in the population over 3 million category. At the provincial level, awards included best print feature, best radio feature, best special project, and best student engagement for our school symposium. The Global Award from Crime Stoppers International was for Best Television Feature. And lastly, our statistics from the past year reinforced the direction our program has taken by removing individual reward payouts and replacing them with a program that channels our funding efforts back into the communities we serve across Toronto through our Community Reward Program. We have several community reward pro uh, proposals pending, however COVID-19 restrictions have prevented us in completing these projects. That said, we have once again sponsored the Toronto Crime Stoppers School, award, School Sponsorship or Scholarship Award with Humber College. The scholarship award is presented to a student entering their second year of the Protection Security Investigation Program who demonstrates aptitude in the area of safety and crime prevention, displays positive leadership skills, and through their actions encourages others to reciprocate positive energy in their school community. As we look forward to 2021, Toronto Crime Stoppers will continue to find creative ways to generate awareness and stay connected to the community. A few projects currently in progress are our Hoodies for the Homeless initiative with our partners from MoMines, which we anticipate deploying later this month. Again, we are also finalizing a, uh, the production of the second edition of Captain Canuck Crime Stoppers comic book, thanks to the team at Chapter House Publishing. Today, ready to roll out as part of our continued effort to bring awareness to our youth. We have produced educational public service videos to be utilized in both the physical and virtual classroom for secondary students. The videos are intended to draw attention to the seriousness of bullying and to educate students on the role cr uh, Crime Stoppers plays in helping all communities stay safe, including their own school community. These educational videos are proudly supported by Petro Canada who funded the project. I will conclude by reminding everyone that community safety is a shared responsibility. We must all work together with a collaborative goal to make a difference in the prevention of crime while enhancing the overall safety of our community. Toronto Crime Stoppers is committed, committed to our efforts to mobilize the community to see it, say it, stop it for a safer Toronto. Doing the right thing truly is its own reward. Remember, you remain anonymous, criminals don't. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Now the chief will be available to field any questions. Sean and myself will be available to field any questions related to Crime Stoppers. 
Momin Qureshi, 680 News. Please proceed with your question. Yes, good morning. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I know last year Crime Stoppers made some significant changes in terms of uh, no longer offering rewards because he found people weren't picking them up and diverting that money to community programs. And I wanted to know if you have any statistics that uh, show uh, what kind of impact that had uh, negatively or positively, or if le at least you could express to me uh, what you saw in terms of how that affected, uh, if it had any effect at all, on the way people called in tips and the way the program worked. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Sean Spore, and I'll answer that question. So when we compare 2019 statistics to 2020, uh, and, and especially going through a pandemic, we were only 81 tips where we, behind where we were last year. So we are uh, you know, pretty much on par as to the numbers that we were receiving um, compared to 2019. Uh, our hope is that as soon as we are able to come out of the restrictions that the pandemic, the pandemic has, and we're able to do grassroots community engagement, we will see an impact uh, in growth for the stats that, that we're seeing. Great. Uh, and Chief, I was wondering if you could uh, just add a little bit to that in terms of when the change was made, uh, there are some people questioning as to whether it would have a positive or negative impact, but what's your uh, response to uh, how things have worked out with, without the road work program and the way Crime Stoppers has been working? Actually, I, I, th I think it's, it's, it had, continues to be very, very successful. I mean, even from a community input standpoint, when we examined it, uh, most of the community uh, supported the fact that uh, at least over 50% of them that there wasn't a need for a reward. And so I think uh, the addition, uh, the direction that it's towards communities rather than indiv individuals is an important step, and I think it's a good step. Thank you. Are there any further questions from media? Yep. Jen Hyatt says, Steve Ryan from CP24. I've got a couple of quick questions, if that's okay. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, Chief, this is for you, sir. The Crime Stoppers program is uh, very effective, um, but there's still people out there who think that their identity can be made known um, either through the courts or any other sort of procedures. Can you guarantee people or address that issue with regards to the anonymity of a person from Crime Stoppers? Will their identity ever be made known? Yeah, no, no, it will not. They are protected. Uh, we do not know who the callers are when they call in. And in fact, the courts do offer protection as well to protect their identity and, and so that they remain anonymous. I, I think even Sean perhaps could even be more particular in terms of exactly how they're operating. But you're right, Steve, they, they, uh, we do not identify the tipster. And my, my last question may sound a little bit silly, but uh, with regards to uh, the restrictions on uh, the lockdowns in the city and things, have you found that people have been calling Crime Stoppers with regards to reporting those in breach of those uh, conditions? And uh, would you encourage that or discourage that? Um, actually, maybe Sean, are you better able to answer that? Yeah, I, I, can, I can answer that question. Yes, we have received tips on uh, violations related to the uh, restrictions that have been put in place, um, as we do with, with all crimes and all um, things that concern the community members. Um, you know, whether, you know, answering the question of, you know, would we encourage that or not, you know, I think my answer to that would be if, if somebody is concerned in the community about something they're seeing uh, related to some sort of a crime or bylaw violation or so on, um, they should call in. You know, I think as a community, we need to work together to get past the current situation we're in. Um, so, you know, I think we all need to play a part in, you know, keeping the city safe all the way around. Thank you for that. Thank you. I'd just like to add a little bit to what Sean um, just said in regards to that. If it's an absolute must, that is okay to call, but in certain circumstances, we're directing them, if they're in the Toronto area, to call 311 to report that, because then it's immediate response to some extent, or go on the website and um, do that in that regards on the website, rather than um, Crime Stoppers, unless it's uh, you know, a must. But other than that, there's other avenues, you know, that they can utilize to report that to have um, substantial or beneficial results. Moment, Kureshi, 680 News. Please proceed with your follow-up question. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, 
you've given some uh, uh, details on crime, on crime stoppers working, but I was wondering, I think you mentioned Taquan Roberts. Uh, I wonder if you could maybe mention some specific cases, maybe some high profile cases uh, where crime stoppers has come through and aided in, in an arrest or a conviction. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to do to like specific cases that we've already released because sometimes to go forward and have specific cases and details that may expose a tipster that we're not willing to do. So we can only divulge certain information on a broad spectrum, but not specific details. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Since there's no more questions, we're going to thank everyone for coming. And um, Sean and I might be outside if there's anybody in waiting there to have one-on-one -on -one questions. Thank you very much.